back to BME Stitchery. I am doing just a quick, short floss tube extra to show how I use GoodNotes and how to transfer files from like a PDF or um, anything like that to into GoodNotes. Um, this has been requested by a couple of people in some Zooms that I've done. Um, so just me here today, just a quick tutorial. Hopefully I can figure out how to do a video in a video. And I'm going to show you guys the process from buying a chart from Etsy all the way to like how to mark up things on GoodNotes and how I personally use it. All right, so I'm gonna move myself over. So hopefully post me, editing me, can figure out how to put in the video here. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm gonna get this screen recording started on my iPad. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this and what you're seeing is my Etsy cart or my Etsy account. And to download, first things first, to download PDFs from your Etsy account, you cannot use the mobile app. Don't really know why. Um, I'm just realizing I really hope that my address isn't showing anywhere on here. But anyways, um, you have to go on the website itself, not the mobile app. So I have just used Safari, which is this little blue compass thingy. So I am in my Etsy cart and I have gone, once I signed into my account, I can click this little profile button. Once it pulls that up, I clicked purchases and it brings up all my past purchases. We're not judging here, right? Like judge free zone. So <laughs> don't look at how much I spent. All right. So I am going to go down to a PDF that I have um, purchased, but I have not yet downloaded. So if you can see like each one, um, that you order, like it depends on what you order. So obviously this pre-order from, um, Primrose Cottage is, has not shipped and that's not something that is a, like a download thing. So, um, here, my next one, this monochrome floral sampler, um, is a, PDF download and I can just click this download files and it brings me to this downloads and now I can so every seller does it differently but this one includes like a full chart like everything seems to be separated so I'm just going to download the full color chart and it brings me to this page that oh I'm not going to show the chart mm, sorry <laughs> um and from here you click this little uh, square with like the up arrow and um, from there, I just click save to files. And now I save it to my files because I like to be able to access it from my iPhone or my iPad. This is not a necessary step though to use GoodNotes. You can, once you have the app downloaded from the app store, you can just click this open in GoodNotes um, button, which I will do and then import current document. Oh shoot, I just did that wrong. I did not want to import current document. Shoot. Well, anyways, I will um, click this little button. If you have something open, it will, like it just did, I had that other chart open, it will add it to those pages. So I guess that's something that you could do if that's what you want to do. But if you click open GoodNotes, import as a new document. That's what I wanted to do, import to documents. And then it will be on its own um, tab. And now I have my other tab it includes that, but I'll just delete that later. And actually this is gonna be good because I can show you how to delete pages and stuff. So once I am in GoodNotes, I'm actually just going to really quickly um, show you how, sorry, I'm going back and forth, show you how I do it. So I wanted to save it to my files and then in my iCloud drive, I have um, a folder called cross stitch patterns and I just put them all in there. Okay, so now once I am in GoodNotes, this is what GoodNotes looks like when you first open up the app. So if I click this new, I want to click import. And now I go to my cross stitch patterns and I find my chart. However, for this, for marking everything up, I'm going to use a free chart that you can find because I don't want to give anybody access to a chart that costs 
money. <laughs> so this is just a um, soap box by Pinker and Pumpkin. You can go right on their website. I'll put it in the description. And I think we've talked about it in our previous floss tubes, but they have a crap ton of these cute salt box patterns. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it first opens up. It opens everything on a new tab and to get delete tabs, I don't wanna work on this chart anymore or I finished it. How I do it is I just delete them once I'm done with them. Um, it doesn't delete the document, it just deletes the tab. So you can have numerous things open at once, but just for my eyes, I don't like to see everything that I'm working on. And it doesn't delete any of your progress, I wanna say. Like it doesn't delete anything that you marked up or anything, so um, that's good. All right, so this is what it looks like when I first come on and I can, I'm just using my two fingers and zooming in like this, like this, however you find it easiest. I'm gonna zoom in, you can zoom in so close and I'm gonna kind of go through each um, function of GoodNotes and show you how I utilize them. So this little button I never really use but if you don't want to zoom in directly on the pattern, which I don't really know why you wouldn't want to, but if you don't, <laughs> there is this little, I think it's, I don't know what the function is called to be honest, but you can just zoom in and then use these buttons to move it or over, or you can just drag it and move it around. Hope that didn't make you dizzy. And then from here, I can just mark up this. So this works, I've actually used this once or twice when I need to see like the bigger picture, but I also wanna mark up my small stitches. So if I'm looking at like where something is placed or a, in between a page or something like that, I often use this, well, I shouldn't say often, I don't use this very often, but it is helpful for that case. So next we have just the standard pen. Um, you can change the thickness here so, and if you like tap on it again, you can really change the thickness. These are just like the standard presets. You can change the color by going in, in this drop down. Um, these are what the presets are, um, but you can customize any color that you would like. And then it just has like a history of your most used. I don't really use the pen function. Sometimes I use it if I have a chart that has a lot of colors. Sometimes I'll just go like this and be like three equals 310 or whatever the color is. And obviously I wouldn't want it that big because I can't really see, but you can just draw whatever you want or W equals, I don't know, blank. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can just change anything, add anything you want with the pen. So this is the eraser, which I just used. Um, again, this is like the diameter of the eraser. So I keep it on this middle one because I don't want it too big and I don't want to accidentally delete something. But if you've made a big mistake and you got to frog a lot, this big eraser can erase, say I have to frog this whole branch. Uh, I can just go like this and it gets rid of a, a lot of it at once. This is the highlighter. My most used feature, um, I use the highlighter pretty much only. <laughs> so if I am working in here and I've done these stitches, now this is where it's important to change the color. My favorite color is like blue, purple. So that's why I use the blue a lot. But for some of my charts that are darker, I use the yellow. And you can change the color in, whoops, in the same way by just clicking on the color. And then, oops, I clicked the wrong button. You can click custom and do any of them. Um, Again, to change the highlighter thickness, you go here. Um, and it really depends on the chart because some charts that are really big and the symbols are big, you want to use a bigger highlighter. So, because some of my charts, like that covers one symbol. But this chart, I'm going to want the smallest one to cover that symbol, if that makes sense. So, that's how you can change the um, size. Um, next is shapes. I honestly don't really use this it you can make any shape and it will connect it it's cool for like journaling and stuff if that's what you're going to use it for but i really don't use it ever <laughs> okay so i'm just going to go ahead and erase everything so we can keep going um this little guy again it's really great for journaling but i don't use it very much it just you have to create a complete circle 
if I'm even using it correctly. I'm not 100% sure. And then you can hold it and take a screenshot of just that. I never use this. Again, if you were using it for like journaling or if you're a designer and you need to like replicate something or you want to, I don't 100% know, but that's what that function does. Um, this little guy, I am going to be honest, I don't know what this does. Oh. You add notes. So this is a note. So you can add anything, I guess. Little stickers, a sticky note. I never use this function. <laughs> okay, and then this little guy, if you wanna insert a picture from your camera roll onto a page, again, I don't really use that for the function that I use GoodNotes, but if you're using it for journaling, this would be great. And then this little keyboard, again, never use it, but if you're journaling, hello. <laughs> if you're journaling, it'd be great. Um, this little text box, um, it just inserts a text box wherever you click. And then this would be great if I were to use it for work, and I might, honestly. It's like a little laser pointer, so I can show you guys, like, on this screen recording, like, where things are on my good notes. So, like, oh, look over here where this says hello. That type of thing. But, again, I don't really use this function. <laughs> oh, well, did you look at that? I'm learning new things too. So these are pretty much all of the functions, the standard functions. Again, I really don't use anything but the highlighter and the eraser. And every now and again, I use this zoom function. So it just really depends on your preference and how you want to utilize all of these features. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase everything. To delete text, I still haven't really figured that out. Um, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> Do I have to go back in here? Hmm. I'm still learning too. <laughs> okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so now I am going to go into like navigating your pages and such. So I am currently in editing mode and I wish that this laser pointer would work on this ribbon, but I'm up in this editing mode in this top right corner. You can see a pencil with a little like dash in it. If I click that button, I am now no longer in editing mode and I can only zoom in and move pa between pages just by a simple like swiping between the pages. I cannot edit this document at all in this mode, which is really great when you're navigating between pages because to navigate between pages when you're in editing mode, you have to swipe using two fingers, which sometimes gets a little hard. I don't really know why, but it, is <laughs> okay so then i can also in this little button you can insert a page so i saw someone using good notes on tiktok um under cross stitching and she actually has like a journal page before every chart like in her chart and it says like the start date and like how many hours she worked on it so it'll be like a journal like a, a log for example like on May 7th, I worked an hour and a half on this piece. Stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. And then at the end, she um, just added added it all up. So I think I might actually start this because it's in your chart and it's not like it's too complex to do. So I don't know, we'll see, stay tuned. <laughs> and then this little button is like a bookmark. Oops, I'm still in the laser pointer. Um, I never use that, but if you have like, or your color page or your chart page, for example, that has all the symbols and stuff, you can bookmark it. Um, and then in your, this little button, this, these, I guess you could call it the waffle. <laughs> That's how we describe like buttons like that at work. So you can click on the little waffle and it will um, bring up every page that you have. So in a multiple page chart, this is super handy, especially when they go like the opposite way that you're going. So sometimes I like to work vertically on my chart. So I like to do all of the border going down or something like that. And if the pages go this way, but you're working this way, this, um, I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, this view is really handy. And then this um, little, square with the arrow going up is just to like export this page. Um, you can send it to someone. Again, 
I never use this. <laughs> and then this little microphone, um, I'm not gonna click allow because I don't really like my butt, my stuff to <laughs> hear me or whatever. But if you were g going to like record a presentation, kind of like I could have used it this time with this, but I'm choosing not to. Um, if you want to record a presentation, it would record your audio, um, which is pretty cool. So I am going to this little button on the corner. These little arrows is an undo and a redo. So I'm just going to show you like, boop. Um, I can undo things, which is super handy if I've marked the wrong symbol or I, I don't want to switch over to the erase function. It's super handy and you can redo. So a lot of times I'm counting and I'm like, oh shoot, I made a mistake. Undo on my chart, but it's right on my pattern. Oh, redo because I counted again and it's right. <laughs> I use these a lot. And then these little buttons, the three dots, Again, I don't really use this, but you can use the go-to page, there's a copy page, rotate page, whatever you need to. Um, if I wanted to, whoops, see I'm in editing mode and I just went to go switch pages. So if I wanted to delete this page, you would just come in here, move page to trash, trash it, and it only removes that one page, whoops, in your document. So that is all the features of GoodNotes that I use. Um, again, you can see I have used GoodNotes a lot. Um, this is the paid version, which I'm not 100% sure. I remember how much it is. I can put it on the screen. I will look it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can sort them however you want by name, by type, which they're all documents for me. So that's not going to change anything. But I always do it by date because most usually I'm working on whips um, in like order. So that's everything that I think I have for good notes. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, again, just a short, quick 20 minute video on how I use good notes and how um, you could use good notes if you want. Um, again, please let me know if you have any questions and I really hope that this video helped. If you guys wouldn't mind giving this a like and subscribing to our channel, we would greatly appreciate it. Have a great day, guys. Bye.